Hi everyone, this is Hedia Shariat Mandari, and today I'm going to be speaking about soulscapes, primordial soup, windows of truth, as well as relaying a message from the Turtle Clan. And I hope that you are all tending to yourselves, your families, your communities, and the heart of humanity in beautiful ways. Uh, these messages came through through several visions and communications with healing intelligences, consciousnesses, and vital life forces that I have relationships with. And um, they came through at the end of March, the last week of March, but I was asked to um, share them publicly in this moment. And I was asked to share two personal experiences regarding soulscapes. And the first experience um, took place at 2003, 2004. It was one of the first uh, years that I began having more formal readings where someone would come and sit in front of me and show me um, their soul, would show me some information. And in this first experience, the woman who came and sat with me for some time, she was very young, she was very lovely. And she was what I used to call a bubblegum popper. I had judgment at the time towards the depth of someone's life experiences compared to um, my life experiences at that age. And in this time together, she showed me that for almost all of her embodiments, that she was a person of great responsibility for a lot of people. She was a person that was responsible for a large body of knowledge um, and tending to people and transferring information in different ways. She was um, what we would call a scientist, um, a great innovative teacher and thinker, a spiritual leader, also governmental, um, like tribal and governmental um, person of great responsibility. and. She showed me in that experience that her soulscape wanted one embodiment experience. She's had three in the sum of, of her soulscape experiences where she didn't have responsibility, where she um, wasn't um, deeply intimate with a large body of knowledge or the depth of knowledge that she's lived for most of her incarnations. and it was a teaching for her and an experience for her to have greater understandings in um, concurrent life experiences and what we call future incarnations towards being um, better able to support a large amount of soulscapes. And um, it was a great personal teaching for me at that time in my life. It shifted everything um, of how I understand people's personalities, um, their actions, their thoughts, um, very differently than what we only see, feel, sense, hear in this experience. And the second Soulscape story I've been asked to share with you occurred a couple years ago. I was in a room where someone was saying that um, they had an agenda. It was very lovely, but they, they had an agenda to, you know, help this person shift their mental construct to bring more vitality in their life and change their ways. And I didn't know the person that they were talking about. And in that moment, this person, Soulscape, came right up to me and showed me that um, he had a very strong agreement with his daughter. His daughter was probably eight or nine at the time um, to not shift any of the vital life forces, the energetic dynamics, any of his mental body. And it was specifically to serve both of their soul agendas in this um, experience. And that was the the contract in a lot of ways. And so those are the two soulscape experiences that the healing intelligences and consciousnesses have asked me to share in this moment as part of 
this greater message that is coming. And they've also asked me to speak about primordial soup. I um, have not Googled it and um, am relaying information that was shown to me in a vision. And what they were showing to me was a time when the earth was beginning to form. And in modern biology and science, uh, they consider it a time where there weren't any life forces or um, consciousnesses um, existing. And what I was shown was that it's time where there were what we call a lot of elements that we know on our periodic charts um, as the table of elements and currently they are not considered to be vital life forces or consciousnesses because they don't have cellular aspects. But what I was shown was that during this time in this primordial soup of all these elements, a very strong, sharp um, bolt blast of energy came in to the mix, into the energetic field, into the physical components of all of these elements and created new consciousnesses, created new life forms. And that one moment of this energy coming in, whether this energy is the hand of God, a lightning bolt, a meteoritic matter, um, part of comet debris, whatever this new vital life force that came in shifted the entire um, reality of existence. And within this primordial soup, there's a matrix of possibilities. And there's always a matrix of possibilities. That's the reality of life, um, of a thousand components constantly shifting and creating possibilities that may or may not happen in each moment. And what I keep being very, very strongly shown um, is, is a vision of, imagine a field or a landscape as far as the eye can see of Rubik's Cubes. And if you don't know what a Rubik's Cube is, it's a, a cube that was a toy that was very popular in the 80s or 90s where um, you're shifting it and changing it till it reaches the harmony point. And the harmony point is when all the colors on all the sides um, are in their plans. And in this um, vision that I keep being shown within the matrix of possibilities that is always the reality of our existence and the many existences that affect us, right now we're in a time of unlimited potential. The matrix of possibilities is extraordinary um, and for as long as I can see um, as what they're showing me through time, we're going to be in this exponential unknown reconfiguration of just very dynamic possibilities sprouting at all times. And within this soulscape primordial soup matrix of possibilities, there are windows of truth. And I've been asked to share that the windows of truth is a recognition or an alignment with a perspective in the moment. And just like how we have our windows in our homes and the, the truth of the reality outside we see, whether we're looking at a roof or a bush or any physical object we're looking at outside, through that perspective, it's constantly shifting. And most of it is shifting because of the quality of light. Um, the light changes the color spectrum, the light changes actually the angles and the shapes that we're seeing. And as well within ourselves, um, we're all very unique and very dynamic. I am colorblind, um, perception gifted, and so I see colors differently than other people. 
as do the birds and a lot of animals and insects. We have retinas that we were gifted, you know, that perceive reality differently than other, other beings. And something as simple as age or time, we consider that a fixed known thing. Well, in my um, culture and in Mongolian and Korean cultures that I know of, I'm living my 46th year of life. But in American culture, I'm living my 45th year of life. So these things that these constructs that are considered to be fixed, something as simple as color and age and time aren't necessarily so. And so imagine, um, you know, our perspectives and the reality constantly shifting with the quality of light, um, the angle of light. There's many, many windows of truth as a recognition or an alignment with a perspective in the moment. And the exact full statement that I was asked to communicate is the reality of right, truth, reality, vitality, and divinity is our unique window of truth within each moment and configuration within the primordial soup of our soulscape and experiences for each and every being in existence. That is life and what modern culture has tried to suppress, dismiss, dismantle. Time is fluid. Creation is momentum. Life is ebb and flow, circular and spiral an animate force free from bound constructs or the competition created within non-divine hierarchy. And directly following the communication of this message, the Turtle Clan came and had some things to share they began by having me experience while witnessing, it was a very multi-perception um, level experience of one of their young hatching. And the epic journey of this being um, beginning to navigate um, towards the sea and a life of um, being in its nature. And within this experience, I was shown the turtle first um, opening the membrane of the shell and coming out and feeling the sands for the first time and not having a parental unit, an elder, um, any external information on how to proceed in life this turtle is navigating its existence um, naturally through the innate, absolutely vital um, information that is within the pulse of its blood, that is within the memory of its bones and its shell and its muscle. And this baby turtle begins to move towards the sea. And as it moved towards the sea, it begins to get pummeled a little bit by the first soft waves of the shore. And as it continues to swim, it there's, you know, the harder waves of the shoreline and eventually going out into the sea. And I was shown the perspective from the turtle where its sea as far as the eye can see. And the turtle is naturally navigating its life as a natural being towards its home in the ocean through all the information within it. Um, and it's both effortless 
and very effortful at the same time. And so the Turtle Clan asked me to relay this message and at the end of the vision, I was strongly told and shown that stamina is what is needed uh, to be conscious of it and to be um, prepared for a long journey that we are still um, at this hatching point within ourselves and within the collective. And I relay these messages uh, without agenda or personal commentary or interpretation. We're each very unique bundles of um, information and unique experiences, soulscapes and stories. And so again, I hope that you are all tending to yourselves, heart, mind, body, spirit, soul, anyway, and all the ways um, in every moment. Please give yourself what you need at all times. And I send everyone much love. Um, may you be in the hands of peace and carry uh, the heart of health within uh, this epic journey that we are all just beginning. So be well, I send you much love, and um, thank you.